Wild and, and some other organizations have really been uh, trying to come let me back a little bit. So you mentioned some comments from Governor Brown, and I know that you've been trying to get a response from the governor. And I just wondered, have you heard anything back? I just know you've been kind of rallying the membership to um, and trying to get some sort of response or some something from. And so I'm just wondering, did anything ever come? Now, our organizations have had the opportunity to meet with Jason Miner, the governor's natural resources office. Um, now, uh, both, I think, on by phone with a member of our organizations and in person last Friday. Um, the letter that, that Rob is citing is in response to our sign-on letter, a uh, letter that was signed on to by ET organizations, um, asking for some further inquiry into the Union County Wolf case. So in that, in her response uh, to that letter, which I'm happy to provide copies um, to the commission when we submit our written comments, so that you can see that. Um, she also called for consensus in the Wolf Plan. And, and I might just reiterate the, a couple of the, you know, to the extent she spoke on the Wolf Plan, she said she wanted to see non-lethal options remaining a prioritized response to controlling depredation. As we've talked about it, the plan says that rhetorically, but there are no enforceable, no longer enforceable standards, and I think we saw how that played out this year in terms of in decreasing public trust in what was going on. That's why we've asked for depred, um, site-specific uh, depredation or conflict deterrence plans and qualification reports uh, carrying those forward into the future phases of the plan. She said transparency and decision making must also be, continue to be a hallmark of the Wolf Plan. Again, those and other provisions we've been arguing for were really important in getting public trust uh, during phase one when everybody did support the plan for the, for the first time in the history of the plan. She said as additional peer-reviewed science on wolf management becomes available, I expect it to also be considered during the review and update of the Wolf Plan. Again, we had scientists who are are deemed credible enough to be cited in the Wolf Plan, who made very direct statements that they felt like their science was being misapplied and misrepresented in the plan, um, certainly in the way the plan was being carried out. They used words like flawed, um, they used words like bias. It was pretty unequivocal, and we've touched base with them. None of them have heard from ODFW staff directly. We appreciate that it's seeing an increased science in the plan. Um, it seems like an improvement. We haven't gotten, a, at least I have not gotten a chance to look through it very carefully. But I think that those scientists deserve a direct response. They took time, their time to, to reach out to the agency. Um, if they're important enough to put in the plan, I think it's important that they be, they be spoken with and that they, their concerns be addressed. And again, finally, she said, we need, quote, we need a plan that has broad support to make wolf recovery successful. This is the, I, 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 I may be a broken record, so forgive me, but this is the first time that no wildlife conservation groups and non-consumptive wildlife conservation groups in the state of Oregon have supported this plan. We've supported it for 13 years. This plan has less support than ever. If anything, under its current provisions, we saw more conflict um, in this last year, and I don't think that's the future that benefits anybody in, in this room, whether, whether we're wearing cowboy hats or whether we're driving Priuses or any of that kind of stuff. I don't think it benefits anybody, and it certainly doesn't benefit the agency.